YouTube friends, it's Victoria from Victoria Makes. Just having a nice cup of coffee. So in November now, and it's obviously autumn, and I've got some beautiful plums. So I thought I would actually make some plum jam to keep us going with the lovely flavours. So yesterday I cut the plums in half and de-stoned them, and then I put them in a ceramic bowl with sugar. What you have to do is you, you have to weigh your fruit when you've taken the stones out and then add half that weight of sugar. So if it's a kilo of fruit, it will be half a kilo of sugar. But on the first day, you need to put all the stoned plums in an earthenware bowl and half the amount of sugar. Layer them up and cover it up and leave it for at least 12 hours. What happens then is all the liquid comes out and the juices are extracted and mixes in with the sugar. That's yesterday. So today I've taken all those plums and half of the sugar, as I said, and I've put it in my preserving pan. Before that, I washed out all the jars that I wanted to use for the plums and I've put them in the oven on 140. They will sterilise them and obviously then hopefully will be beautiful and clean and hygienic so we don't get any spoilage later on through mould or anything like that. So now I've put all the plums in my preserving pan and I'm bringing it gently up to the boil. It takes about five to ten minutes depending on the heat etc. Now when that's done I will then put the remaining half of the sugar in to the pan and carry on the cooking process. So I'm just going to weigh out the sugar. Meanwhile before I go I'll show you I have this tool handy and I've got my trusted thermometer for my jam and sweet making. It gives me the great temperature so we get a good result and I have a very wide funnel and these things make the job much easier when you're actually decanting the preserve into the jars. Also the temperature is so that you get the right set. You can use a traditional method and I use both actually where you put a, a saucer in the freezer and then you take a teaspoon of the jam and you think it's just about set. Take the, the saucer and put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes so it's really really cold. Bring it out, a little teaspoon of your jam on the saucer straight back into the freezer for about two or three minutes and then you can do a test and what you do is you run a clean finger through the middle of the jam and if the jam does not sink back into itself and it's not watery anymore then it's a great indication that that jam will be set when it's cooled down in the jars. Sometimes it takes two or three or four attempts. If you buy yourself a jam and sweet candy thermometer then if you use the correct temperature that's given on any recipe you should have a good result at the end of the day time. So it's entirely up what, what you want to do. I mean, going back years and years, I have a, a Mrs. Beaton's cookery book and I love the very old Constant Spy uh, cookery book. We have different methods, don't we? So what we do is we just boil these plums down so they become nice and soft. And at that point, you then put the remaining sugar in and then you rapidly boil it for about 25 minutes. Um, now, in the meantime, I've got myself a little sauce them and put that into the freezer like I said so that that gets nice and cold and it's lovely as well at this time of the year to make jams to give them as Christmas gifts or birthday gifts or thank you gifts and it's nice to show appreciation by maybe giving somebody a little gift of benefits for making your own produce and crafts and gifts and I'll be going through a lot of those sort of ideas in this channel so I hope you'll subscribe and keep following me and put in your comments below to say what you actually do and if you make any nice things to give us gifts or if you've tried different recipes and you could recommend them so i'm hoping to build a channel to a community sharing channel where we all can share our ideas and help each other so i'm seeing that these uh, plums now are breaking up somewhat so let me just get a little bit on another bowl and show you to compare so the plums are getting nice and Sort of squidgy, hopefully you can see that, and that when you put the spoon in them, you can see it breaks up quite easily. So now, get the rest of the sugar in. Give it a good stir. Turn it down just that little bit, and we're going to stir to combine the sugar and get it all melted. And I, I tend to just try and mix it up and try and break it as I, I am cooking it so therefore there aren't huge lumps but it's nice when you are spooning it out and you get quite a big 
chunk of, of plum as well. Plum jam has a lovely taste. Now, what we do is we also use the stones in a muslin bag and put them in in the cooking and boiling up process. Then it imparts a natural pectin which helps thicken the jam. It also gives it a little touch of almond. So it's not very strong, but it is there. Um, and it's a nice addition actually. But it also helps you set your jelly, uh, jam as well, so it's worth it. I'm just having a cup of coffee to do. It's a, a latte. Just one of the mixes. I do love my coffee and I do love my tea. But teas are so many different ones, isn't there? Arguably, we were told that there's a lot of different coffees. But so, yeah, that's coming along nicely, must admit. So it's just boiling up. The jars are in the oven, being sterilised. So I'll take those out and probably about the next 10 minutes. They've had a good length of time there. I like to keep them in a long time. It doesn't hurt. 140 is a very low oven. If it's if they're in about 35 minutes plus, they look like they're nice and sterilised, washed thoroughly beforehand, of course. You can also put them through your dishwasher as well, but I haven't got a dishwasher. I'm the dishwasher. <laughs> right, so looking good. So it's it's breaking down a lot. Stones are coming out, coming out very nicely. Right, so back to using the, the thermometer. Okay, and check for temperatures up to 104 degrees. And I don't believe it's ready yet, but I like to have a little uh, test and see how, what the temperature is and, you know, if we're getting there or not. It's going to be lovely. This jam is gorgeous in Victoria sponges. This time it's beautiful to make an almond sponge and put plum jam with it. Um, it's also nice, just a, a plain Victoria sponge, double cream. And the full size sometimes do an autumnal bakel tart. So do a pastry base and then the plum jam. And then do make a French pan topping and layer it up with flaked almonds and that's delicious as well in the winter. And I hope to do lots of different recipes with yourselves as well. And take you out on, into the woods and forage a lot across the year and see what we can get and then come home bring them back and make things and create things with them. So hopefully you will subscribe for content throughout the year. I love to sort of create things with each season. So, you know, it's very variable what you can actually make and create. The fact that we can get most things all year round, not a good thing. I do feel that nowadays a lot of things are probably brought into this country from elsewhere because it's been not in season here. But the quality just is not there. The taste isn't there. Um, so often it's just disappointing, you know. So if you can try and find foods that are in season, you will and the local, you'll find that they taste so much better. I've actually got a funny tale to tell because my husband went to North Africa to a, a market store asking for a particular vegetable and they laughed at him. <laughs> they just thought it was crazy because it wasn't in season and uh, you know and you just take that for granted don't you it's not always a good thing right so this one has got up to 100 at the moment so again we want it increasing to about 104 so it's bubbling away isn't it? you can tell it's really really getting very hot so i shall pop that on the side there i always do plenty of jam jars sterilize them it's best to do a lot more than you need because if you haven't done enough then you've got to start thinking well I've not got a sterilised jar. It's no big deal is it? Yes you sterilise it but if you don't use it just pop it away for the for next time. But if you haven't got enough that's where the problem is. It's slightly going so I'm going to return it to the stove actually just for about another two minutes. Try again. So straight back in the freezer for the plate, but that's nearly there, isn't it? Now, if it was totally not, not done at all, when it went like that, it would just have flooded back and obviously the whole surface would have been covered again in jam. There was a little bit of retention there when I did that, but a little bit more is needed. So 
it'll go straight back on the pot for about another minute or two, no more. And in the meantime, I'll just set the jars out. Right then, so I think we're, we're nearly there now. So as I said, I'm going to just show you that next stage where we can put the jam on, straight back in the fridge for a second. Uh, I've taken out my sterilised jars now. They're red hot, okay, absolutely red hot. So I'm going to show you now next what we're going to do. We're going to make way for the preserving pan as well. It's all systems go when uh, when you're at the right uh, stage. Let's get that jam out. Right, so we've got this again. Straight through and we'll have a little look. Two more minutes. Right then, so we've put it in the freezer again. And I'm going to just test. Yeah, I think that'll be quite nice. That's lovely. Right, so, as I say, off with everything. I need to get this over to here so we can start potting up. So I've sterilised this. And I need one of these. I'm just going to pour the boiling water over a ladle because I find the ladle really, really useful. You must take care with, with this pan because it's really hot. So generally I try my best to put something down on the surface. So we're going to get the jam in. First of all to take the stones out. Give it a good stir. And let's start getting straight in the funnel. It's quite messy so what we're trying to do is avoid getting any jam on the sides of the jars and we want to fill it up to nearly the top and as you can see I've done about eight but you know that's what you're thinking <laughs> I particularly like making jam with fruits that are not very prolific so things like green gauges rhubarb it just extends the season that you can enjoy it there because uh, as you might be aware there isn't a lot about some of the supermarkets this year didn't even have green gauges and um, I was fortunate for a lovely lady gave me some last year and uh, this year I've struggled to find it I did see it in Waitrose which was good so I did get some but not enough unfortunately next year and I made a, lo a lovely rhubarb and rose jar. So with a clean kitchen roll, make sure all the edges of your jam jars are thoroughly clean and you haven't spilled anything on them. With that wide neck funnel, you've done really, really well. Carefully, without touching the inside of the jars, pop the jar lids on quickly. These again have been all sterilised. Okay, just quickly put them on and then I'll show you what with this tool we can make sure that they're very, very tight. So that's clear it. Let's get this out of the way for the moment. I do like a nice tidy kitchen. Can't work when there's a mess. All right, so using another piece of kitchen roll, I like to get it over here. And by using this tool, which is fantastic because it allows you to hold the red hot jar, you can hold it in one hand really firmly and then hopefully twist it. The red hot truly are, obviously, and you can burn yourself nicely in the jam if you're not careful. So we've got five jars of loveliness, three left. I'll put those away and then we'll sterilise those on next time. So that's been my plum jam. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.